You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravelpodcast.com where you can read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, follow me on social media, view helpful resources, listen to past episodes, and contact me. Thanks for joining me in episode 13, Gambling and Credit with Travel Fanboy. Fanboy and I had lots of laughs in our conversation as we spoke about Las Vegas, Atlantic City, casino status matching, and maximizing credit card benefits. But first, some personal and podcast updates. February of 2020 was packed with travel, carrying over into March. I had a great trip to Vegas, Hawaii, and back to Vegas. I was also approved for two new cards, the American Express Business Green Card and the American Express Gold Delta Sky Miles Business Card, both with great sign-up bonuses and referral bonuses for friends whose links I used. I canceled my Aspire card in year two to free up room for the Delta card, and we'll have to wait until around April to cancel the Bonvoy business card when the second year annual fee posts. I'm waiting for time to pass to apply for the Altitude Reserve card with US Bank, and will likely get another Barclays card in July, six months after the JetBlue business card I opened in January. Thanks once again to podcast listeners who continue to get approved for new cards through my referral links. Cakeology, special guest from episode 12, is now a partner of the show. You can support my show by using a referral link located on my website for his services, which help people establish and build businesses and get premium business credit cards. He works full-time as a business coach and offers valuable consultation, starting with a free phone conversation. Today's guest, Travel Fanboy, hosts a podcast and website aimed at budget-conscious travelers and low rollers who want to have great vacations without breaking the bank. They're saving with loyalty programs, credit card benefits, and good deals particularly in Las Vegas. On with the show. All right. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Lots of Twitter exchanges, uh, laughing about all things credit and gambling and uh, things uh, unrelated, although I guess it's all related in in one way or another. Yep. We're just off uh, Seven Stars Insider Daryl sharing all of his displeasure for Caesar's poor grammar and odd marketing. He should just become their copy editor, really, at this point. I know. Why don't they hire him, right? Right. Here's your opportunity, Caesars, if you're listening. <laughs> Bolster your marketing initiative, right? Deploy more of those capital dollars. Yeah, some of it does kind of astound me. I mean, I these kind of mistakes happen, right? But I mean, I, I, I'm a copywriter by trade. And so I'm like, I, I don't think half of these things would ever, uh, you know, get published, uh, at least in my team. So uh, it's kind of funny. Right. How, how can you be an influencer uh, having boy choy and general chicken at your <laughs> Right, right, right. Exactly. Uh, but you liked the boy choice. I do, that, yes. That goes well with your handle. Anything that's on brand for me, I'm, I'm good with. <laughs> All right, very good. How did you get into the whole credit card space yourself? Uh, you know, it was kind of just a natural crossover for me. It was wanting to go to Vegas a lot and just trying to find opportunities to do so on kind of a, a limited bankroll. And so I think it just kind of was a, a natural next step. I think a lot of gamblers are very focused on kind of the ins and outs of comp hustling and, and kind of maximizing casino rewards. Mm-hmm. And that skill set lends very nicely to just kind of navigating the points and miles community. Right. And tons of synergy. I was saying that myself. Well, credit cards right. can add to whatever else you're already doing, but particularly for gambling, I see tons of parallels. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have our diamond status with Caesars, for one, if you'd like to talk about that with listeners. That diamond status match from Wyndham to Caesars is, I think it was very well covered in the points and miles world for a while, but is, in my estimation, kind of just really gaining ground in in the gambling world. I'm not going to take credit for that, but I think that's where you see kind of uh, the Venn diagram of gamblers and comp hustlers and points and miles people that that crossover was actually very small for a very long time. Again, I don't think I should take credit for that, but I think it shows that there are some natural synergies there like you're talking about. And what I think you're starting to see is more and more gamblers be interested in the space. And that's not just people in my community, but you know, podcasts like Gambling with an Edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had kind of more and more guests talking about credit cards and things as well, because in my estimation, it's easier to get more out of points and miles uh, with a few kind of little tips and tricks than it is to kind of get you know, kind of the same value uh, in the casino world. Um, and so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a nice crossover. Uh, I think the benefits are there. When those synergies happen, it can be a lot of fun for, for people who enjoy kind of uh, 
both uh, communities. Right. And with the status match, it has been covered to death, but yet people still say, how do I do it? How do I do it? Like, well, right, right. <laughs> just Google. And are still finding out about Google it. it. Yeah. Google it and you'll find it. Yeah. But it's just, just really quickly here. It's matching the Hilton gold or diamond status to Wyndham diamond and then Wyndham diamond matching to Caesar's diamond. And that's all done online. Right. And then eventually you pick up your diamond card in casino. And even for non-gamblers, you get the free valet, the free parking, the $100 diamond celebration dinner that someone at my one of my poker tables called the celebrity dinner. They they missed that. They messed that <laughs> Ooh, one I like up. That. Yeah, may, I like yeah that maybe part. at Planet Hollywood in Vegas that would work, but uh, not so much in Chester. It, I think it's not just IFG, right? I mean, you can have, um, as long as your status matches into diamond at Wyndham, mm-hmm. I believe. Different uh, ways, yeah. Yeah, different ways you can do that. Uh, I'm sorry if I misheard you there, but uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of ways to do that for getting a credit card that's you know under a hundred dollars in an annual fee. And uh, to your point, there was just there was just so many people that still didn't know about it. I suspect that this is not going to last too much longer, or it's going to change in some iteration. Right. But at least for 2020, it's it's going strong. Yes, and now we're recording February 15th, and a lot of people have reported success in rematching because I wasn't certain about whether they would allow you to do it again. Would they just mm-hmm. cut it off and say, oh, well, only if you're a new member with Caesars or only if you're a new member with this program or that program. But it's still it's still kicking, although Ocean and Hard Rock dramatically pulled back. They were yeah. they were giving a lot out in free play. So it's one lesson I, I tell people a lot is that when you see a good deal, it's a really good idea to get on it early because it mm-hmm. usually doesn't last very long, especially when it's a really, really good deal. Good deals will kind of come and go. So there'll be more opportunities as well. I think that's I think a lot of people have kind of FOMO or, or a lot of regret that they didn't hop on a particular deal. But uh, there's always something new kind of cropping up. So uh, it's a, it's okay to uh, to miss one or two here or there. Right. The fear, the fear of missing out. As long as it works into your schedule, you're not really going out of your way. And that's something that you've talked about, some of the side right. where it can become a hobby that really, really takes you in and it seems more like a chore or a job. So it's it's about still keeping that fun factor in there and not, I think it was, as you mentioned, scrambling at the end of the year to redeem all of your <laughs> yearly credits, yeah. everything like that. So a good tip for listeners, if you have those yearly credits, knock them out early. Just strike that off your to-do list and really be on top of things rather than losing value at the end of the year. We're talking about some of these annual fees. If you're not using the benefits, you're not getting that value. It's a wasted proposition. Yeah, I think it's useful for people to do a credit card audit once a year, at least um, prior prior to the end of the year. But, you know, if the end of the year works for you, I may have dramatized it a bit and exaggerated. <laughs> I don't think people were, you know, too, too stressed about it. But I do see a lot of posts reminding people use your benefits and people not so much scrambling, but, you know, trying to kind of weave in and out of these programs, figure out, you know, the best way to get some sort of value or squeeze some value kind of at the last minute. And, you know, if you, if you find you're doing that or if you find that uh, you struggle to justify some annual fees, you know, it's it's maybe worth considering dropping a card or two or, you know, taking a step back or just kind of slowing the pace a little. Because I think uh, it, it, it's easy to get overwhelmed as well because there are a lot of opportunities out there. And uh, I say just just take it slow. It'll be fine. Right. And also make sure that you're taking the right steps. You're doing the research before you get cards rather than I see in a lot of groups like, oh, I got denied. Why did I get denied? But if they took a little bit of a survey about what the bank rules were or they weren't, say, firing 10 applications in a month, then (laughs) it probably probably would have gone better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And even some benefits that I have, I have monthly benefits, uh, quarterly benefits. I put them into Google Calendar. And once I strike them out, then I'll just go click and remove that from the list. Like every month, I'll have a a $10 store credit at CVS, a $5 store credit at GameStop. And I just picked up a Baby Yoda t-shirt yesterday. Walked in there. I I, (laughs) I see you with these GameStop posts. I I, I need you to expand on that because I have no idea what you're doing uh it, it, it's I am, like he's at GameStop all the time I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of deal there that's going on I need you to walk me through that right well there there's there's a dead deal you used to be able to use GameStop gift cards to buy a lot of other gift cards but now they, they changed that so since I had a pro membership with GameStop I would get two mm. percent back in everything including gift card purchases so I have a boatload of rewards points 
So I can use those for a lot of merchandise, clothing, whatever. Okay. And now I have the $5 monthly credit as part of that pro membership. I see. Okay. I was like, this GameStop thing is seriously underreported. I think he's the only <laughs> player, and I have no idea what's going on. All right. Interesting. <laughs> there it is. All right, back to back to Vegas a little bit. You you right. <laughs> that's all right. No, it's all, it's, in Vegas, it's all yeah. no no no. They're there. They're there. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you would know. <laughs> they're everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Vegas. Yeah. Uh, indeed, I think it is a great low roller destination and a destination for everyone. Is it's a harder mm-hmm. sell for me to say to people, "Hey, come out to Atlantic City." <laughs> There's a lot right, more to do right. in Vegas than Atlantic City. Yeah, I'll be honest. I I was thinking about it recently, actually, when you sent me over kind of uh, some questions and notes here, and I, I've started to realize that I think that is something that gamblers say that might not be as true as we hope it is. I mean, Vegas is an amazing city. There is a lot to do there. But I think when we say there's something for everybody there, it's us trying to convince non-gamblers to go with us. Uh, you know, that's like a line that I use for my wife. I, <laughs> Vegas is an amazing place. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I, I think in terms of getting a lot out of points and miles and being able to do a, a particular tourist destination on a budget, to me, it's hard to beat Las Vegas. Uh, I think there's so many opportunities there. And it's true, there's opportunities even if you don't gamble, but let's be honest, I mean, Vegas is the gambling capital of the United States. Uh, and so that really kind of takes hold and then is what kind of moves and, and, and breathes life into the city. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, there's just an exciting thing about Las Vegas. And um, I just enjoy thinking about it, even, if, you know, when I'm not going, I'm, I'm sipping out of my Las Vegas coffee mug right now. Right. And for miles and points, usually the flights are relatively inexpensive points wise yeah. and even cash wise. And of course, not, right. not flying Spirit. I've been flying Delta a lot out there and it's around 20,000, 25,000 miles to fly round trip from Philadelphia. So that, yeah. that's been really nice and using the Delta Sky Clubs, the lounges that I get as Ooh, a benefit yeah. with the American Express Business Platinum card that I have and good customer service there. I haven't had any issues with people reclining seats. You know, that's been the rage. On, <laughs> yes. What, what? <laughs> get those boxing gloves out. Yeah, yeah. And in Vegas with the diamond status also getting free show tickets, which is mm-hmm. really nice. The parking fees are, are none. I'm parking at the hotel that I'm staying at. The room rates are around right. like $25, $30 a night on the Strip. I've been staying at Harrah's and Bally's. And maybe I get better rates because I'm playing poker. But I've heard of people who just did status match also getting great rates as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of ton of opportunities. You've got the high MGM partnership. Of course, if you do have Wyndham points, you know, you can book Caesars room there. That actually used to be a, a tremendous sweet spot before Wyndham changed the, the price uh, for points on those. I mean, you were able to get with Caesars for 15,000 points a night. It was amazing. Uh, and even the, the Marriott uh, Cosmo partnership, I think, what, Hilton um, and Tropicana. So there's there's a lot to be had out there. And uh, even, even if you're not a big gambler but you've got some points and miles uh like i said there's there's definitely plenty of opportunities to have a a low roller trip right and i recently booked for the world series of poker there was a hilton property out there for only thirty thousand points a night i booked five (laughs) nights so i got the fifth night for free it was a hilton home to suites so you have your own kitchen out there too if you wanted to go to a grocery store and make your food and that was that's great and that's how credit cards really change things because i've said for a yeah. while i would have liked to attend this i would like to go to this country i would like to travel here but oh well it's expensive what how am i going to afford this but with miles and points it's like well i only have to pay what the ten dollar surcharge for the flight <laughs> and i have some incidental right. charges like maybe the rental car parking but it really really drives down that cost yeah no absolutely all right, to be part of the madness of people from all around the world coming to Vegas, playing poker, playing the cash games, the tournaments. It should be, yeah, it's gonna it be, should exciting. be an interesting thing. And skipping the waiting list with diamond status as well. Ooh, have you ever played in the WSOP? No, this will be the first time. Ooh, I'm looking forward to following along. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bucket list item of mine for a long time. I think I'll probably, uh, maybe for my 40th birthday, I'll... Uh... I'll jump on that. Nice. And even some of the Caesars rates were very good at that time. So what I did was booked the weekdays with Caesars and then the weekend nights into the next week with Hilton. And the rates didn't change with Hilton. It was only the 30,000 points even on Friday and Saturday. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good plan. So I was able to go back to back. Hopefully I won't be saying at the end of this, oh, 10 days was too much. (laughs) But I'll I'll take an off day. And yeah, there's a lot of exploring to do, whether you're downtown, whether you go to Grand Canyon or some of the areas adjacent to Vegas or close to it. Right. Like Red Rocks and things. Yeah, there's, there's some relaxing things to do. Take a spa day, you know, treat yourself. 
Right. Yeah. Got those Hilton Resort credits to use. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. And with gambling, people people have a lot of these negative ideas. Oh, you're going to lose your all money, <laughs> or you're go- yeah. you're going to lose all your money. Oh, you're crazy. Why Why would you do this? What a waste. Uh, how how do you respond to a lot of those criticisms? With an affirmative, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're, not, they're not completely invalid, but it's uh, to me, it's just what we're talking about is a difference in how we like to allocate our resources, right, and how we like to have fun. And you know, there's things people do that I I really don't get. There's hobbies people have that I, I don't understand, but uh, you know, it's not really for me to judge. And I think if people are you know mindful of their bankroll and and they're you know they're not getting uh, too outside themselves, then uh, it's it's a perfectly fun hobby to have. It's you know, it's like the most social that I tend to get. I, I'm, I tend to be kind of a homebody and don't like to go out. And so, yeah, go out, see it out with my friends and, and hang out for a bit, uh, you know, spend, spend some money. It's, you know, it's, it's fine. And it, it, it can last all day. I'm going to um, see a musical with my wife tomorrow. The tickets are like 75 bucks a piece. Of course, we're going to have dinner and I'll, you know, it turns into a two, $300 night. So, you know, it's just, everyone has different tastes and if no one's, uh, you know, if you're not spending out, you know, out of control, it's, it's, it's to me a very reasonable hobby to have. But I understand that some people uh, think differently. Right. You're coming in with realistic expectations. You're not betting more than you can afford to lose. And it, it, in many cases, the price of entertainment, if you're playing the table games, if you're not playing a game with an edge, the house doesn't have much of an advantage. It's not like you're going and um, just betting $1,000 on sports book, like flipping coins or something like that and losing, sure. losing money there. You're what you're playing craps, the house maybe with a uh, close to a 1% edge, depending on how you're betting and blackjack half percent. Um, mm-hmm. and not really, not really a big deal. And not going in just uh, hoping that you're going to win all this money. You come in with realistic expectations. I, don't, I never go in with the expectation I'm going to win money. In fact, I'm usually planning on losing it. And I do a very good job of, of doing so. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't even matter if I had an edge in the casino. I'm still not going to win. But that's okay. I have a good time. And to me, the value uh, is there. The value of you know what I spend to the enjoyment that I have, uh, you know, it, it makes sense for me. So Right. And others' entertainment, maybe they'll go out to a steakhouse and spend $150 and then they'll give you a right. hard time of, oh, I can't believe that you're going to the casino or they'll go to a movie theater and spend this money there or golf or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is, there's all sorts of entertainment. So with gambling, it's a cost of it. Or if you actually play a game where you have an advantage or like me, if you're playing poker, you're looking into the game, you're finding a lot of strategy, things that really interest you and even making money mm-hmm. is, is always nice as when you're playing against other players. Of course, that's a, a strong possibility if you're playing a solid game. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. And you're also getting some comps. You're getting some rewards. You're getting things back to offset some of those losses. You know, on occasion, it to me, though, I, I tend to have a different perspective on those kinds of things where that doesn't really factor into my calculation of, of value. And I, I do see that argument a lot. And it's a fair argument. And I think it, it works for people. But I'm not going to it's not going to adjust how I approach things. It's not going to factor in whether or not I feel like a particular piece of entertainment for me makes sense value wise. I'm going with the expectation that I'm going to spend some money and I'm not expecting something kind of in return. It probably helps temper my expectations too when I don't receive a comp that maybe otherwise someone in my position might feel they deserve. Uh, but to me, it's not like a one to one dollar value, if that kind of makes sense. You know, someone giving me the potential of a free room later, you know, let's say the room is 150 bucks a night. That's not one hundred and fifty dollars to me. Mm-hmm. And so because that's just, you know, maybe I have a only a 50 percent chance of actually redeeming that free night. So now we're looking at what it's seventy five dollars, maybe potentially. Um, and so I understand where that that becomes part of the calculation for people. Um, and I think it kind of goes back to the idea of like these annual credits or these mm-hmm. perks or benefits of credit cards where like take the $50 Sixth Avenue credit for the Amex Platinum card. I have like a 50% chance of actually remembering to use that credit. So that becomes a $25 credit if I actually also, get it. I'll send you, yeah. send you the reminder <laughs> when there's a shopping just, portal bonus. You yeah, know. please, just text me. Um, so yeah, I, I, the comps are fun, right? That's just kind of like a fun uh, kind of side benefit of these things, but it's not something that I'm too concerned about. Certainly not something I, I'm searching for. And, you know, different strokes for different folks. But to me, that actually in a way, helps me get more enjoyment out of my casino visits because I'm not worried about something else at the time. I'm just trying to enjoy myself and kind of be with my friends. And if kind of these other stars align, that's fantastic. Right. 
And yeah, it could go on that extreme of, okay, well, I'm doing this just for the benefits. And then you calculate whether it's really worth it. I recall a few years ago, right. there was a casino that had an hours promotion that the player who played the most hours at the poker table received a bonus at the end of the month. I think the top prize was $1,000. And there was a guy who was playing maybe 10, 15 hours a day, sometimes even more. The guy was fall right. falling asleep at the table. There were arguments with other players. He was forgetting the cards he had, making mistakes. And at the end of the day, it's like, okay, well, you received the $1,000 bonus, but how much time did you actually have to put in to get that? And was it really right. worth it? So yeah. really thinking about what you have to do to get some of the benefits or how much they're really worth to you, how much does it matter is, is an important thing. Because yeah, any random blogger, writer, whatever can say, oh, there's this great benefit that you can get this free certificate or whatever. But yeah, people are going to value that a lot, a lot different. Yeah. I mean, and take like with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you know, going up in an annual fee, it's, it's like 550 now, right. but we've added in this lift benefit and lift and Chase are valuing this benefit at X amount of dollars. It's like, that's great. What do you value it as? What's the likelihood that you're going to actually use that benefit? And to me, that's what goes into my calculations is, you know, my likelihood of using it, what's the kind of market value out of it? And that's where I kind of start to pinpoint, you know, my value calculations. Right. So it's it's good to be mindful of that rather than just jumping into something or really taking that careful view. And some cards, I think, are, are very easy winners where it's like um, I got the Barclays JetBlue card recently, the JetBlue business card. And that was spend a thousand dollars in 90 days and get 60,000 JetBlue miles. And there's an annual mm. fee of ninety five dollars. And the card has other perks, too, like free check bags, 50 percent off in flight food. Like, oh, that, that one, <laughs> that's a that's an easy yeah. winner right there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of like a lot of the hotel cards that give you, you know, a, a free night, you know, a, every single year. Those are really easy ones to, to kind of take advantage of. And, you know, say like the Hyatt card where, you know, you get that free night every year. I know I'm going to it's it's pretty much guaranteed 100%. We always have a random wedding that we have to go to or, you know, something comes up. And so, yeah, there are, there are easy ones and there are ones that are a little bit less clear. And if that's the case, I say just, you know, take a few minutes, figure out, you know, what uh, what value you could potentially get out of it and, and go from there. And it's going to be, you're going to be imperfect and that's okay. Uh, just kind of taking the thought and, and thinking a little bit more, maybe the next person is what's going to kind of set you up for some moderate success. Right. And it's a nice thing to have a, a bank of travel points, I think, or benefits where you're saying, well, okay, it's reasonable to think that I'll be flying in the next year. So now I'll have these miles here. They'll be ready. I won't be like, oh, well, I have to get a card now. And then when are the miles going to post and <laughs> go, going right. through all that? that rushing. So it's nice. I hear some mm -hmm. people saying, okay, well, I don't expect to travel in the next three months, five months, whatever. So I'm not going to get a card right now. And I say, oh, okay, well, I'll just continue getting cards. And then I'll have those miles ready, those points ready for that next trip that will be coming mm -hmm. up. Yeah, so how often, and it, this is something that you can definitely cut if you want, would you say that you're signing up for a new credit card? Do you have like a, a timeline or is it, do you do it more on a whim? Is it a combination of both? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. It's become a little bit complex because I was waiting on signing up for cards with issuers that are harder to get in with. As I recently got the MGM MasterCard, and I got the mm. Flex Perks card with US Bank. So for me, the MGM MasterCard is amazing because I'm in Atlantic City most weeks. And sure. I could get that 2x grocery category and the 3x MGM category. And generally, I don't talk much about categories because I think for most people, they're not really going to get a significant return from categories. But if you're spending a large volume in a category, then it can make a difference. And the, the real thing about the MGM card, the big kicker of it is that you can get casino status through the spend on the card. Whereas with the Caesars Rewards Visa, you don't get any tier credits, you don't get any status with the Caesars Visa, but with the MGM you do. So when talking right. about all the status matching and what's going on, I I can't expect to have that MGM gold status for years to come, but with the credit card and continuing spend on it, it's very reasonable to continue with that status that's valuable to me. So I, right. I waited and said, okay, well, I'd like to get these cards, but the issuers were talking about, okay, well, we need to see a longer period of no inquiries. So it made sense to wait. So I waited six months and I filled in with some business cards that weren't hard inquiries from American Express and worked on some other high spend goals to fill in the gaps. So that was a, a rare situation of waiting the six months. And now I'm waiting to get the altitude reserve. So mm. I'm waiting for time to pass getting that as well. But 
just starting, I would have a different approach. I, I would go with, okay, well, can I reach these spend goals? Is this a reasonable goal at this time? What are my upcoming expenses? Taking a survey and not taking in more than I can actually get. I, I see in some groups where people post, oh, I only have two weeks to go and I'm a thousand short. What should I do? That That's a terrible situation to get yourself in because the mm-hmm. sign-up bonuses are really the the big point of all of this and most of the cards. So, well, six months is like three lifetimes in <laughs> points and miles yeah. writer's world. Uh, do you ever find that you're in a situation where, or have you ever thought like, I need to slow down just for me? Not because I want to sign up for a different card and I can't get approved. You're like, you know what? I just need to, to take a break for a second. Yeah, there, there were some deals that disappeared at the end of December, beginning of January, where it, it wasn't as worth it to approach certain things like staples they have that fee free gift card promotion Mm -hmm. and okay i can use a card that gives me three percent cash back at office supply stores but i was realizing okay well the time to actually go to the store and then some of the reps saying okay well hey we can only sell you one is it really worth going into the store to get that one purchase taking that detour and then having to then use that gift card at a later time to get the money off of that to liquidate that gift card and no other bonus there used to be the Dosh app that was giving five dollars a visit at Staples, and that made yeah. it actual. That made it a much better proposition to go into that store. But when some of those things disappear, it's like, okay, this isn't as worth it anymore. So mm-hmm. instead of pursuing this, I'll just sit by, wait, and pursue some more profitable things, or even add some leisure or refocus some of my efforts too. So that that could be an example of slowing down. But as far as the credit card signups are concerned, I can hit the signup bonuses really easily. So I want to get as many cards as I can. I think I'm really good at managing them. The organization's definitely there. And it's it's later into the game where some people, they hear about, oh, well, you have 20 cards. How do you do that? And my suggestion to people is, okay, just start with one, hit that sign-up mm-hmm. bonus, and then see if you're ready for a new one. Like, learn how the system works. Start out with a card that's pretty easy to use, doesn't have a big annual fee attached to it. Uh, usually, I'm recommending the Chase Sapphire Preferred or an Amex card, an Amex business card and something that's more user friendly rather than okay go sign up for the platinum or the business platinum or the csr right. or one of these more complicated cards mm-hmm. yeah no that, that makes sense yeah i don't i i doubt i'll ever get to the 20 card mark only because i don't know if i've set just kind of some arbitrary barrier and i don't want to i think it's because i've said so many times publicly that that's too much and now i just can't because i'll look like a giant hypocrite which i am <laughs> in other areas so it's fine uh but i i do think it's interesting hearing people kind of talk about it how they manage it uh, but you're right I, th- I think starting with one understanding the program understanding just kind of how everything works uh, is is good because to your point i see a lot of people kind of jumping in when i say i see a lot of people i see it like it, it we're kind of involved in forums and stuff like that mm-hmm. um and i see people get excited Excited and they kind of, you know, just kind of dive right in. Uh, but I think taking a, a very cautious, it's the right word, but uh, a slow, calm approach to it is likely best. And what about cards that you're going to sign up for? Do you see any offers at the moment or are you waiting on? I don't really have any plans right now to get a new car. I just got the Amex Gold that rounds it out. And for the record, so when I say like, I'm not a fan of having too many. Again, that's just me personally. I think I have six that I have right now and I feel okay about that. And no, I'm not really, I don't know. (laughs) I like one of the worst people to talk to in this community because I don't, <laughs> I, I'm totally not an evangelist and I don't really get excited about too many cards. Um, you know, I, I don't really have any on the horizon right now. So we just did, if I can do a cheap plug, we just did a credit card draft on my website. Um, and this was, of course, speaking of me being a hypocrite, after I told people, like, don't have too many credit cards. There are some interesting conversations there. Um, I, I think getting into Capital One is probably a long-term thing. I think they're making some really good strides in having kind of more robust products. And I think they'll be kind of um, a, a a company to watch uh, in this space. You can definitely tell they're trying to be more competitive in, in the travel card world. And so I think Capital One is, is one that's on the horizon, but uh, a little bit more longer term. Yeah, the venture card, not so bad. And recently they expanded their partnership with Wyndham, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's uh, probably going to be some interesting casino opportunities there as well, uh, being able to transfer Wyndham reward credits to to Caesars. I don't, I don't see anything too fruitful, but uh, there's always that possibility. Maybe a window will open. Yeah, not so bad, especially for people who aren't traveling much. They can just convert those points to the reward credits and maybe get inside of the Caesars lounges or use those to pay for hotels when staying at Caesars properties. 
yeah, exactly. food, whatever happens to be the case. Although it's not a one-to-one conversion, right? I think it's about 80% value that you would get from the Capital One points. Uh, yeah, you know, I haven't looked at it too much, but that, that does sound right. Any other advice for people just starting in the space? You know, going back to kind of uh, the original thesis, which was just kind of make it fun. If, if, you're, if you're getting stressed out about it, that's probably a good time to take a step back and, and just kind of uh, reconsider things, not like stopping the entire hobby, you know, altogether. But, you know, I do see a lot of people get a little bit stressed, whether it's like a mileage run or a mattress run or any other <laughs> type of run that you're going to be doing uh, or just running in general because I hate running. But, uh, you know, th- those kinds of things, it's... It, this is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to either help you take better trips or help you take more trips or just make your travel, you know, just altogether better. And if you find that you are stressed out about things, it's it's creeping over into other areas. And yeah, take a step back because this can be as involved or um, as casual as you want it to be. But even someone like me who takes a very, very casual cr- approach, maybe even a comically casual approach, you know, you can still get a lot of value out of it. Right. And we're, we're talking about mattress runs or mileage runs. So this is people who are staying nights to try to get statuses or taking flights to get statuses. And they're not yeah. really looking for so much of an experience. They're just saying, OK, well, I'm going to circle this, that, go back and get the status. I need to do that before that year ends. Right. Yeah, I always see posts, you know, about there's always some sort of new promotion coming out with the hotel. I think Hi, it's the latest one. And I'll see a headline that says, is the new promotion worth a uh, mattress run? And I'm always like, no, not for me. And I just don't even click on it. But I, if people are getting value out of it. People like doing it, so that's fine. Uh, but I think for me, having kind of very clear lines of what I will and won't do, again, no judgment on people who will or won't do it as well. Um, it just it makes uh, my approach uh, fairly easy and consistent, which is nice. Right. And I like to diversify my points as well, rather than just being so invested in, in one system. I like flexible sure. points. I like having different opportunities, whereas, OK, well, maybe that flight with Delta won't have a good time, but I can use my points with another carrier and leave yeah. around noontime instead of a 6 a.m. flight. I, I saw that recently where I ended up using a portal. It, it was it was mysterious in that trying to book directly with Delta had it was a 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. time and mm. the other option was 8 p.m. So it was like really, <laughs> really bad times. But when I yeah. when I used my Wells Fargo points booking through their portal, booking Delta, there were different flights that showed up like what what a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, that is odd. <laughs> so just having some different options there is is really nice. And I've heard some people, too, about really being able to help family members or attend medical emergencies, a lot of different uses that people have found for their points. Yeah, definitely. That happened uh, to my wife and I, nothing too major, but we had a a sudden flight change that needed to happen. She had to fly out on a different day and, you know, flights were going to cost five, 600 bucks, but, you know, I found a ward space and it cost, you know, less than 20,000 in points. And to me, that was, uh, you know, it wasn't going to, you know, put us back dramatically financially, but it was just a a really nice benefit to having just even a basic understanding of, of how to use them. Good. And you've you've met a lot of people through the community. You've you've found some friends in the community as well. It's been uh, for me anyway, an unexpected benefit that there was such a community around this uh, credit card credit card space. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think as we were talking earlier, you're starting to see the the gambling world kind of cross over into the points and miles world. There's been, you know, conferences and, and you know, get togethers and meetups. And uh, it's a lot of fun to me. That's the most fun part about doing all this is just kind of, uh, I'm more of a personality in the scene. I'm not really a thought leader, if you will. Uh, and so, uh, just going out meeting people, talking to people, uh, it's been, uh, kind of one of the great joys of, of kind of doing the writing and the podcast hosting. Right. And you'll be organizing a, a meetup or an event or just a, a fun social thing in Biloxi, right? <laughs> I don't know about organizing. I, <laughs> what I like to do is as little effort as possible and then co-opt it and make it as much about me as I can. Uh, (laughs) This is very much uh, exemplifies that. Uh, So yeah, there's going to be a meetup in Biloxi April 17th to the 19th, I believe. Um, And so it's really just uh, people hanging out. Prior to this year, it was called Gamble Palooza. It was hosted by podcast host uh, Cousin Vito. He can't make it this year, so we're not calling it Gamble Palooza, but it's kind of the the yearly spring casino meetup, and this year it's in Biloxi. And, of course, because Cousin Vito won't be there, I'll make it all about myself and, and <laughs> rename it. But it doesn't mean I'm organizing anything. It just means that a lot of people will be there hanging out uh, and gambling. I am hosting a small kind of get-together for uh, like very close uh, friends and some, some followers of mine uh, in Louisville and 
about two weeks, which will which will be a lot of fun uh, as well. So hoping to do kind of more like local meetups, maybe in the Midwest, uh, where we can have some fun, and just kind of hang out, uh, talk shop, go to a casino, those kinds of things. And you'll get to use your My Vegas rewards while you're there as well, right? Yeah, we'll see. I, <laughs> you know, I haven't really uh, taken a, a a deep dive into the opportunities. I don't think there's a uh, too much. I think it's just what Beau Rivage, maybe some some free drinks. I'm booked right, at Harris right. uh, to stay, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll definitely check into that. I don't even know how many My Vegas uh, points I have right now, or coins, whatever we're calling them, and LPs, the loyalty points. Yeah, LPs. loyalty <laughs> points. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's great. I had I had an episode on it before in a video as people were asking about it. And initially, I was skeptical of like, what? Oh, I'm going to have to play this game to get these coins. And how much is it really going to be worth? And I don't want to be sitting here spitting a slot machine. But when I discovered Mm -hmm. it had an auto spin feature, and I could just keep it in my lap at the poker table or have it going while I'm at home doing other things, even on, on my desktop computer. It's like, wow. So now I have around 800,000 points and I've been consistently re- redeeming them at Borgata. And I think you can buy the Excalibur. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah. So I have my own tournament of kings there, right? Right. Uh, yeah. My biggest, uh, back in its, when it first came out in its heyday, it was unbelievably valuable to have. I mean, it was so easy to earn those points and the redemption opportunities were, were so great. I mean, I remember getting like two, like, two weekend nights at the Mirage for an incredibly uh, cheap rate um, in terms of like the LP redemption. Uh, there were just, I mean, I think I had, I think I clocked like 10 nights uh, at various properties because of my Vegas without much effort at all. They've of course tightened it up a bit. Uh, all good things kind of uh, come to a, a slowdown, not a complete halt, but yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely in my repertoire of, of, um, uh, skills was, uh, you know, maximizing my Vegas uh, early on. Good. And even now, Borgata is really, really good as every quarter they have a new batch of rewards. So once you mm. if you cash them in in January, you'll have to wait until the end of the first quarter to get the rewards again. And it's a free room for a week, day, night, a 20, mm. $25 food comp, $25 match play, $10 free play. And of course, the buy one, get one sandwich. <laughs> there you, I didn't even know that was a thing. All right. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really good. Although when I went to Vegas recently, they told me that I couldn't redeem the Vegas rewards because I redeemed the Borgata rewards, which was interesting because hmm. the Borgata rewards aren't marked as premium rewards, but yet it's still showing in the system as a premium reward. Oh. So a little tip to listeners there. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it was really nice. Although, unfortunately, Borgata is charging the resort fee, but it can make sense mm. to stay there when the Caesars rates are a little bit higher or you're just looking for a change in environment. Yeah, I love that casino. It's really nice. Yeah, so lot, lots of opportunities. And, and really, for me, it's looking at what the promotions are. Can I have an edge here? Can I maximize? Are, are there good redemptions to be had? And even the status matching went to Golden Nugget Casino in Atlantic City and I play poker there on Wednesdays and they're giving seven dollars and fifty cents an hour in comps just for the low the low limit game there, the one three game that they have. So oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, when I went to New Orleans I was able to use my comps at various restaurants out there, the Landry's properties, and I could even mm. use the Golden Nugget comps inside of Harris Casino. They have the McCormick and Schmick's property. And you could stack that with happy hour as well. So much stacking going on. See, that's the thing. That's uh, that's yep. another thing in my repertoire that I'm not. Uh, I'm purposely not adept at because I feel like I would run myself ragged with all those stacking things. <laughs> yeah. So so lots of good opportunities, and I Atlantic City giving away free rooms with poker play as well. So a lot of people will go and play at Harris for four hours, go to Borgato, or even just stay at Harris. So it's nice to see casinos incentivizing people to come to their properties because we often hear about devaluations. We hear about things just totally going away. Even some properties they would have like, oh, play poker for four hours, get a $10 food voucher and they pull that. It's like, what? You, you have more incentive for people to <laughs> stay at the table. And even in Vegas, yeah. Vegas, they have play four hours, get a buffet coupon. And I see people at the table looking at their watches. So am I at four hours yet? <laughs> and they're, they'll stay at the table for that extra half hour to hour. Yeah. The casino makes money and the tables and the games stay open and they bring other people into the casino. So it, it's it's nice to see that. So are you just blind stealing people that are looking at their watch too much because you know, they're not going to get involved in a big pot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens a good amount of the time. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, that's that's a lucrative proposition there. Yeah, yeah, uh, $3 at a time in some cases, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was it, it was fun the the recent the recent trip out there and I, I could see myself returning every few months in Vegas 
using the my vegas rewards and looking at the the rate calendars that i have especially when there are the free nights or the 20 to 30 dollar nights at caesars yeah yeah i like that a lot i mean I, I still think there's value to be had out of my vegas i think you're proving that and so it's if you have a vegas trip coming up it may be worth kind of firing that up and just kind of checking it out yeah and i, I do the daily check-ins i keep it on auto spin throughout the day when I'm still working toward the daily challenges or I'm not LP locked. And it's just a very, very easy to accumulate those points, I think. Yeah, definitely. And even coming up, I'll be traveling to Hawaii. I have free night certificates from the American Express Aspire card. So oh, yeah. instead of going from Pennsylvania to Hawaii, I'm just going to stop in Vegas rather than being in airports and planes for 12 hours or so. I figure, okay, well, I'll just go to Vegas, stay there for a few days, go to Hawaii, come back, stay in Vegas again, and just take a break from all the flying. So that's a really, really good pit stop. That's a great plan. I'm not jealous in the slightest at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never been to Hawaii, so this will be a, a first for me. What What are some other destinations that you've gone to that you've really enjoyed? Oh, man, that's uh, I was not really ready for that question. Um, places that I enjoy traveling to, well, obviously Las Vegas, I like a lot. Goodness, I, I just like the American Southwest, so I love uh, hanging out in Arizona. Um, I love the, I love Sedona. I think it's just, it's great. Um, probably my wife and I's favorite destination to go to, though, is Mexico, Cancun. We're a big fan of all-inclusives, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, we're not out and about moving all day. Literally, like, all I like to do on vacation is nothing. <laughs> um, and so, of course, like, one of our favorite gambling, or not gambling, our favorite vacation destinations is a place where it's not too great for points and miles maximization. Of course, there are opportunities there, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it, it's befitting of me to take a very kind of lazy, casual approach to vacationing as I do kind of most other things too. But yeah, Cancun is probably our, our favorite spot to go to right now. Yeah, it's a really nice thing I like about the Hilton and Hyatt properties that you could just have the breakfast there and some of the locations with lounges as well, rather than, oh, we have to drive somewhere like 10 minutes to eat and then go back. Yeah, <laughs> you're just you're just right there. That was really nice in Athens, Greece. When I was there a few months ago, they had the executive lounge. So you can just go and have dinner there, have breakfast and it was set and still some exploring. Of course. Yeah. But. Yeah. See, we don't like any exploring. We, <laughs> we're, we, we, don't, we don't do it. People ask us all the time, like, what you do on vacation? Like, I did absolutely nothing. It was fantastic. We didn't leave it. I, I want to walk 100 feet to the restaurant, to the beach, and, and I'm good to go. Yeah. So for people like that, that's that's great. A subcritic's mm -hmm. like, I can't believe you. You know, you went to Vegas <laughs> right. and you, you gambled every day. You know, why didn't you go and do something else? Like, well, that's just what I wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the Eiffel Tower in the distance. I did some world traveling. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We went, to, we went to the Magic Castle. It was okay. The same thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, another, another question I had for you here. You're often critical of some trends in the credit card. <laughs> uh, can, can you talk about some of these disturbing trends? Or, or things that, that you don't particularly like? Oh, uh, gosh. I, I don't know. Do you have any, like, trends that you have seen me be critical of? Because I feel like I've just cast a wide net in terms of what I'm critical of. It's hard for me to, like, pinpoint one right now. Yeah, you, you were talking about people using very definite language oh. <laughs> and offering fina financial advice yes. in some cases about you should never, you should always, uh, things like well, that. That might not make most sense for most people. Let me add some context here, which is going to make me sound like a complete psychopath. But um, <laughs> so I'm a my day job. I'm a writer. I write about financial topics a lot. And <laughs> so sometimes I get writer's block. And one of the things that helps me get out of writer's block is when I read really bad writing because it inspires me to try and write better. And it's this is a completely weird thing where I actually have. <laughs> in my browser saved articles that I think are absolutely terrible and are giving bad advice. I'm not saying that any of the recent articles that I've shared on Twitter or anything like that, I actually would never publicly tell somebody that the writing is bad. Uh, but uh, I have these kind of saved and I read them again because I feel like they're people doing people a disservice and I want to help people. And so that's what gets me on my writer's block. But anyway, finances in particular are so nuanced, um, not just in terms of financial instruments being nuanced, but everybody's relationship with money, you know, everybody's um, kind of personal financial situation 
And so when I see people writing definitively of you must do this or you have to do this or everyone should have this particular product, uh, to me, it does people a disservice. I don't think people are coming from a bad place necessarily, but I think it comes from a lack of understanding of people's cognitive biases, how they interact with money, um, and just kind of how people generally approach finances differently. And uh, to me also, at, at times, it shows a little bit of a lack of understanding of how complicated some of these products can be and how they can impact people. And so, yeah, to me, I I do get a little bit critical. I get uh, kind of on my soapbox a little bit. Uh, But I always say, like, when you're writing about finances, don't don't be too prescriptive, especially if you're not qualified. Um, And I I never try to be prescriptive either. Uh, But also don't use kind of those definitives there because one, products can change. um, And two, you just you you never really know how a particular product, one, is going to work for somebody or two, how they're actually going to work with that product. Uh, And so, yeah, that's uh, (laughs) that's me. uh, At times I I do. I uh, I like to scream and shout at times on the Internet uh, about some of the injustices I'm seeing uh, in the writing. But uh, like I said, I think most people are coming at it from a good place, but just get a little bit misguided uh, when they're giving advice. Right. And in some cases, people can be misguided about their their own interests and talking about uh, related here credit line increases or credit lines. I see people (laughs) posting so much about, oh, well, I want to get in with like Navy Federal Credit Union because they offer me this tremendous line of credit. And, you know, I I don't care about sign up bonuses. I don't care about category. I just want credit, 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 credit. And then I I ask some of these people like, what are are you even doing with the lines of credit? Are you actually Mm -hmm. using that money to make money? What is it? And they're they're convinced that that's the most important thing in the credit card space. Like, but but why? And you just don't hear right. You just don't hear any response. I I really haven't. I mean, just starting maybe that can be helpful so you can get other cards. But if you have a decent credit score, like, what is that really going to do? Or people obsessing, I want that perfect credit score. Like, what is that going to do for you? Is that going to be so much different than seven twenty five, seven fifty? Like, what what is the what is the appeal? Yeah, I mean, and credit in particular is is is. It's pretty easy to understand, in my opinion, if you take some time, uh, but kind of the inner workings of the credit world is is very complicated and at times a, a bit messy and how one particular thing impacts one credit score or credit report and how one thing impacts another. You know, you could you could have one one action that you do that impacts one credit score model differently than the other. It could show up differently on one credit report than the other. And I do a lot of writing on credit and I have access to a, a, a myriad of data and I have pretty definitive answers on how certain things can impact your credit. And even when I write, I'm pretty um, guarded on, you know, how definitive I'm going to be just knowing, you know, how nuanced uh, that world could be. Yeah. And a lot of randomness or what seems to be from the bank mm-hmm. and that two people with similar credit profiles might apply for a card and then one gets denied, the other one gets approved or they're in, in my case, I recently applied for a card with Bank of America and they approved a business card with me saying that I needed to establish a CD with them that if I funded a CD, that would be the line of credit <laughs> for the card. Okay. So, so I did that and applied for a second card nine months later. And then they told me, oh, well, we can't extend you a card because you have insufficient business history. I'm like, what? But you already gave me the first one. Like, do I, right. I guess I need more history for the second card? Or what was that? I couldn't go on that route again. And some people just get straight up denied. And like, it is sometimes hard to figure out and, and puzzling, you know, you, you, yeah. you have it down, and then they just throw a curveball. And sometimes banks getting stricter, in that some people they're getting multiple cards with American Express, and they're just soft inquiries. But some mm-hmm. people are getting hard inquiries for their future cards. So it, it could be confusing sometimes to figure out what's going on. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, and, and you know, very much at times in the points and miles world, you're kind of muddying the credit waters a bit with with credit card strategies. I don't I'm not passing judgment. I don't think it's a bad thing to be taking advantage of, of these credit card offers. But at times it can impact other areas of or other credit opportunities, if you will, whether it's a mortgage, if you're getting a personal loan, a car, whatever it is. At times you don't know if it's a manual underwriter, if it's an automatic underwriting. And and, you know, while we can say that, you know, 
these credit card signups and these inquiries, uh, you know, likely shouldn't impact other areas if you're doing things safely. At, at times, you just really never know. I'm not saying that's a, a good or bad thing. Um, it's just a thing. Um, and so that's why I always kind of caution have a, or have a cautious uh, approach to things. Um, and that uh, not that I think what I'm doing or what anybody's doing is necessarily, you know, bad for them economically. Uh, but it's just, you know, if you have other credit opportunities that you're looking to take advantage of in the future, uh, sometimes a slow approach can make Makes sense. And notice I say sometimes <laughs> instead of being definitive, <laughs> yeah, yeah. should do it. Um, <laughs> so just be careful there. Right. And there, there is a lot of opportunity costs. I see people signing up for these cards that maybe have like a $100 sign up bonus and these really marginal categories and people, sure. oh, look, I'm getting 3% back on gas. But like, how much are you really spending on gas? Is it really right. worth signing up for that card versus another one that gives you a much bigger sign up bonus and benefits and status or whatever the case might be, or, well, what about getting a card that gives you flexible points that you can just cash out and cashing those would give you more cash back than category returns that are pretty marginal. It's like if uh, Joe Q public wasn't really very much into this and said, Hey, I just want one card ever. You know, if you get the city double cash, the American express blue business cash, you're getting 2% back on everything. And mm -hmm. it's like, what's a three X or four X category really going to do unless you're really, really putting a lot of spend into that, like the American Express Gold Card, 25000 at grocery store, 4x points. Like that can be a difference if you get to that threshold. But mm -hmm. if it's just low spending, and are you really going to be ahead after that annual fee and the airline incidental? Are you going to use that, right? So it's going to be so much different from person to person. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point in, in thinking about how much are you really spending in a given year on these particular cards. I, I see that a lot with people that are going for, say, like uh, the Companion Pass with you, um, Southwest. I don't know if you really want to get into the weeds with this, but, you know, it's it, it can take a, a considerable amount of spend depending on how you approach it. And what that means is that you are then not using that spend on another card where it could be a little bit more lucrative for you. I get that the Companion Pass can be fun and for some people can work really, really well, uh, but there might be better opportunities for that particular spend elsewhere with maybe more flexible points. So I, we could talk probably all day about these kinds of things and kind of the ins and outs of all these uh, different opportunities. But, um, you know, to me, that again, just kind of proves that uh, just taking the time, thinking about it a little bit and seeing if there are alternatives out there is, is a good way to approach it. Right. So I think it's really important to be strategic, especially for the low spenders to try to maximize that spend. And that's that's what I do. I, I work mm -hmm. with people to see what card they should sign up for, what their situation is. Is so, uh, you know, I, I was even at the poker table a few weeks ago, months ago, maybe. And one guy was saying, yeah, I really love credit cards. I put all my spending on the American Express Platinum card and I get, <laughs> I get, I get one free flight a year. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> it does, to his point, it does feel good pulling that platinum card out, though, and, and, you know, waving it around. You feel very bougie. Yeah, and the disturbing trend of the Apple card, you know, you see that everywhere. It's like, ugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Like, oh, well, It's like right. titanium, isn't it? That's uh, it's another one where it's it's yeah. a nice looking card. I'll give it that. Yeah, you could even get the Acorns debit card that looks pretty nice. I think that's made of tungsten. Oh, it, okay. It, yeah, it's like, well, if American Express had like the split P card made of the like uh, recycled cardboard and it, it had a <laughs> wonderful sign up bonus and good benefits on it, you know, sign me up. Like, I don't really yeah. care about that. Uh, pretty soon we're going to get like big check territory like they give out like when you win a jackpot. That's just going to be <laughs> a big metal that people are going to brag and hold around. And, yeah. Yeah. Or like, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> or a, get, like super, a, a supermarket right credit card. Yeah. yeah, yeah, supermarket sweep. You're carrying that big bonus around, right? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do what we can. <laughs> yeah, so so a lot of fun. I, I think a lot of uh, finance interested, math inclined people, people who are looking to, yeah, save a lot, make some money, have some fun, hopefully in the process. I, I think mm -hmm. the, the credit card space is a lot for everyone. And as we talked yeah, about, definitely. of course, even gamblers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and to, to reiterate, I don't judge people for going all in. For some people, this is like, this is what they love to do. It's like a big hobby for them. I like playing video games. I don't expect people to like playing video games all the time. That's fine. Um, and so whatever your approach is, as long as you're comfortable with it, you're having fun, like by all means, like, like have a blast. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons has been a pastime for me as I love going to conferences and playing. I've been doing that since uh, maybe the eighth grade or so. And because of the points and miles hobby, I can go and book these hotels, get the benefits, stay at the Hiltons and Hyatts and get the free breakfasts, and <laughs> just save a lot. And I'm going to Gen Con this year. That's the plan. Hmm. So there's a Hyatt, Hyatt property near the convention center that's only 5,000 points a night. And I'll fly out to there and 
to save a lot on that. Whereas in the past, it's like, oh, it'd be really expensive. And some people are driving out to Gen Con from Pennsylvania. Like, oh, no, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. Unless you have some like fun road trip with friends. But uh, so, just so just do me a favor. Don't get super nerdy and cross those. And like, don't name your character after a credit card. Just for me. <laughs> just please don't make them like the crystal infinite bard or something like that. Because that's, yeah. that's too much. I guess. Okay, yeah. He's not like the... Uh, <laughs> like the altitude, the altitude reserve, uh, maybe. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, signature spell, right? It's, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, having fun and continuing with this and different opportunities, opening different travels. Anything else on your bucket list, places that you'd like to go to? I'd like to go to Ireland. I think that's one that... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like me and the Irish would probably get along pretty well. My wife's Irish, and uh, yeah, we're I'm, I'm pretty forward at times, and my wife's very forward, so I feel like I would fit right in. But uh, Ireland's definitely up there. I think Croatia is a very long-term play. I just think it looks uh, like an absolutely gorgeous uh, gorgeous place to go. Uh, so yeah, those are kind of the, the two big ones. That's definitely not... Not in the uh, the near future, but I have been enjoying recently just checking out different gambling spaces in the U.S. Biloxi, I'm very excited about. I just went to Atlantic City for the first time uh, last year. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, getting back to Vegas uh, at some point uh, is definitely a plan. Yeah, and that was the one nice thing of going to Borgata there and picking up that gold status where people can't get it in Vegas. At least I haven't heard of people getting it there. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Did they, get, did they give you any benefits at Borgata for doing the status match? Well, no, I was already gold, not to brag. Uh, <laughs> I was already gold. But I, so I got in with the Hyatt match with the credit card a while ago and just kind of kept that match alive. I uh, never let that lapse. And so that has been uh, how I've kind of retained gold. That's actually how I matched into Caesars Diamond originally was matching my MGM gold to Diamond uh, at, uh, at Caesars in Atlantic City. Any benefits from Hard Rock? Hard Rock I did, yeah. So I got the, I don't even remember. It was, I think it was it two free nights. Is that what it is? Or a yeah. free night or something like that? Yeah, two free nights sounds right. It wasn't, it wasn't for me because I wasn't going back there in the time that I need to do it. So it was just more like a fun little thing. I think I got also got to bring somebody into like the lounge that was there the day of and got some free play. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, no big, uh, I wasn't able to take advantage of the room opportunities. I will say though, the surprising thing, when I matched in person from MGM Gold to Caesars Diamond, they gave me a two free night uh, voucher. Oh, nice. Uh, to stay there, which uh, I, I was not expecting. Again, was not able to use it, uh, but that was nice. <laughs> it was a nice benefit. Good. And you got the free play at Hard Rock too, right? Yeah, yeah. I got the free play. Uh, uh, me and a couple of people actually pulled all our free play together. We all got it at the same time and then just ran it through like an expensive uh, VP machine without uh, very good results. But that was fun nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, the, the video poker at Hard Rock is definitely lacking. That's uh, really sad to see. Yeah, it really was. We're in the high limit room and we're not finding a good pay table, which was which was sad. It so was we like, just, well, like five, seven or. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very because we're like, we'll, we'll go through and do a five dollar, you know, machine. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a little depressing. And where can listeners find you? Yeah, so you can uh, you can listen to my podcast, which I update sporadically. I say I'm on a two week uh, kind of uh, schedule unless I, I don't feel like it and more often than not I don't feel like it so it's like a two and a half three week schedule but uh, the Travel Fanboy podcast you can find me on Twitter at Travel Fanboy and then TravelFanboy.com which is on a very similar publishing schedule uh, as the podcast there I'm actually not one so if you're looking for deals and updates and those kinds of things I don't chase those kinds of things uh, I just I don't have the, the patience to do that so whenever I feel like musing about a particular subject I, I post it up there so yeah that's where uh, that's that's where you can check out my work. Right. And you're on Twitter as well, we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yep. At Travel Fanboy, where you can find me uh, complaining, musing, pretending to be a celebrity. Those, those, you know, the standard stuff. <laughs> yeah. Still having, having lots of fun. And that, that's important. I hope one takeaway for listeners to continue to have fun in the hobby and mm -hmm. uh, keep it, keep it going and take, take the trips you want to take, do what you like to do. Right. Whether it's uh, gambling, golf, D and D. However, yes. try, to, try to find something, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And as, as, as seriously as I take certain subjects, I, I don't take myself too seriously. And so I hope that uh, that comes across uh, at times. Although I have I do have people kind of confused about whether or not my personality online is my real personality. And I just I just let people make their own guess on that. All right. Very good. Anything else that you'd like to add? A question for me? Anything? No, thanks, Justin. I appreciate it. I hope, uh, hope things go well. I've been enjoying following along with your uh you know your your kind of uh poker tour if you will your own personalized yeah, yeah. poker tour and uh best of luck at the wsop coming up i'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that plays out yeah what, what would that be the jvpt 
Yeah, there you go. That's, you got you got your own branded hashtag now. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I got my hashtag comps nationwide as well. That's uh, there you go. That's, that's how you do one. it. Yeah, sometimes you you just got to make stuff up. That's how I find <laughs> any success in this field. Yeah. All right. Very good. I'll let you know when the next uh, GameStop tour is as well. <laughs> yeah, please. Yes. <laughs> All the dead deals. All right. Thanks yeah. for thanks for coming on. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravelpodcast.com where you can read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, view helpful resources, listen to past episodes, and contact me. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Subscribe on YouTube at Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. Like my Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast Facebook page. Follow H g travel podcast on twitter and follow justin vacula on instagram schedule a free 15 minute consultation with full-time business coach and youtuber cakeology who can help you formally establish your business build business credit and get premium business credit cards when you select from various paid services after the free consultation i will receive credit for referring you listen to cakeology on episode 12 of my podcast Visit my other podcast at StoicSolutionsPodcast.com, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day. 